ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد so we continue inshallah the explanation of page 163 uh, we actually start from the page uh, 162 the the last uh, two verses where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem wa ma'a arsalna fi qaryatin min nabiyin inna ahadna ahlaha bil ba'sa'i wal da'a'i la'allahum yadda'u'un thumma baddalna makana al-sayyati al-hasanata hatta nafaw وقالوا قد مس آباءنا الضوء والصوان فأخذناهم بغتة فأخذناهم بغتة وهم لا يشعرون And we sent no prophet unto any town and they denied him except we seized its people with a ba'sa and a darra So every time we sent a prophet to any town and the people of the town denied the prophets we seized them with al ba'sa wa darra we'll see what that is so that they might humble they might humble themselves to Allah then we change the evil for the good until they afaw they increased and said our fathers were touched with evil and with good so we seized them all of a sudden while they were unaware afflictions that struck earlier nations so Allah mentions here the ba'sa and darra that struck the earlier nations to whom he sent the prophets. So Allah sent prophets to towns. These towns, especially the leaders who have worldly control, deny the prophets because they, according to their illusion, they stand to lose their position of leadership. So because they belied the messengers, Allah sent on them al-ba'sa and al-darra. Al-ba'sa refers to physical sickness and ailments that they suffered. So just like what's happening today with this COVID, this is a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you look throughout history, Allah has sent plagues before. Allah has sent sicknesses, tornadoes, earthquakes on the people so that they may go back to the right path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Ba'sa means sickness and ailments that they suffered. While the, the Dara refers to poverty and humiliation that they experienced. Many nations were leaders and then they were occupied and humiliated. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes the state of these disbelievers from health to sickness and from prosperity to poverty. As we see not too long ago, the European economy crashed. People in Spain were looking for food in the garbage to eat. In Greek, the same thing happened. So these people before, they used to be arrogant and they thought that they controlled the world. And after that, they started eating from the garbage to the point that they legalized prostitution so that they can have income. So this is an affliction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But who are the people that are going to read these calamities as a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? No, what they say, they just say this is normal, you know, underscore. They say this is a normal thing that happens. Sometimes good things happen, sometimes bad things happen. So Allah says that he sends on them uh, sickness and poverty. Why? So they might humble themselves so that they might go back and uh, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah shows them that they are weak. So they should really believe in the uh, in the most powerful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah sends these trials on them so that they might supplicate, humble themselves and invoke Allah that he might remove the afflictions that they suffered from. Now this ayah indicates that Allah sent down severe afflictions to them so that they may invoke him, so that they may repent to him. But they did not do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed the affliction and the harm into prosperity to test them to see whether they were going to uh, to see whether they were going to thank Allah this time because of the prosperity. And that's why Allah says, Then we change the evil for the good. Therefore, Allah changed the hardship into prosperity disease and sickness into health and well-being and Allah changed their poverty into richness and prov prov provision so that they might be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this 
but they did not do any of that. Neither did they repent when they were afflicted with harm, nor did they thank Allah when Allah changed that harm into prosperity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hatta afa, that means Allah gave them the bounties of this world until they increased in number, increased in wealth, increased in offspring, and they no longer experienced the harm that they experienced in the beginning. And this is how they, you know, shaitan whispered to them, this is the explanation of what happened to you. The reason why bad times happen and then after that good times happen is because of this. And they said, our fathers were touched with evil and with good. So we seized them all of a sudden while they were unaware. So Allah tested them with this affliction and that ease and abundance of life so that they may humble themselves and repent to Allah. However, they failed both tests. They failed both tests. For neither this nor that compelled them to change their ways. No goodness or harm compelled them to change their ways. And they just said, we suffered and we suffered harm and prosperity. Uh, sorry, we, we experienced harm and sickness but prosperity came afterwards just like what happened to our forefathers in the earlier times so they think they say that this is just the cycle of life therefore they said it is a cycle where we sometimes suffer a hardship and at other times we enjoy a bounty so they think that this is just arbitrary they don't believe that there is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, decrees these things and rewards the good doers and punishes the evil doers so they did not comprehend Allah's wisdom, nor the fact that he is testing them in both cases of harm and prosperity. To the contrary, the believers, on the other hand, are grateful to Allah in good times and practice patience in hard times. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith, عَجَبًا لِلْمُؤْمِنْ لَا يَقْضِ اللَّهُ لَهُ قَضَاءً قَضَاءً إِلَّا كَانَ خَيْرَ اللَّهُ وَإِنْ إِلَّا كَانَ خَيْرَ اللَّهُ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاءُ صَبَرْ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ سَرَّاءُ شَكَرْ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ The matter of the believer is amazing. For nothing that Allah decrees for him except that it is better for him. If a darra, a harm, strikes this believer, then he is patient in the way of this harm. He knows this is a trial from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgiveness of sins and elevation of friends. And this is better for him because he is patient. If he is given a sarah, prosperity, he thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. And this is better for him because the believer knows that now that he has prosperity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala later will test him with the opposite of that. So he has to thank Allah in the time of prosperity and give enough in charity and do good deeds in the times of prosperity so that when the times of hardship come, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward him for the earlier times when he used to practice these charities and that his intention is to practice charity now, except that he doesn't have that money. He still gets the reward for his intention. So a believer should always do that when he's experiencing prosperity, spend much, get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the believer, therefore, is aware of the test behind the afflictions, whether it may be prosperity or adversity that Allah sends to him, as well as the blessings. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, لا يزال البلاء بالمؤمن حتى يخرج نقيا من ذنوبه والمنافق مثله كمثل الحمار لا يدري فيما ربطه أهله ولا فيما أرسلوه. Prophet ﷺ gives a gives a beautiful example here. He says the believer will continue to be tested by afflictions until he ends up pure from sin. So Allah purifies him from his sins through the afflictions, through the hardships, sicknesses that the believer experiences. And the example of the hypocrite is just like that of a donkey. The donkey does not know why its owners tied him in a certain spot, nor does the donkey know why the, his owners released him from that spot. He's just a donkey. He doesn't know. Whatever you send him, he just doesn't know what's happening to him. And the hypocrite is the same way. Good happens to him. He doesn't know why it happened. Bad happens to him. He doesn't know why it happened. Allah said next, So we seized them all of a sudden while they were unaware. 
meaning we struck them with punishment all of a sudden while they were unaware because Allah gave them trials to repent to him that they repent. Then Allah gave them prosperity so that they can thank him, they did not thank him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took them all of a sudden while they were unaware. They did not expect that to happen to them because according to them, this was a cycle of good and bad that happens to human beings. So Allah struck them with punishment all of a sudden while they were unaware. A hadith describes sudden death in this manner where the Prophet ﷺ said, مَوْتُ الْفَجْأَةِ رَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِ وَأَخْذَةُ أَسَفٍ لِلْكَافِرِ وَأَخْذَةُ أَسَفٍ لِلْكَافِرِ Sudden death that happens to a human being, you know, he suddenly dies without being sick or anything, is a mercy for the believer. Why? Because he's a believer. He's worshiping Allah, obeying him. Whenever he dies, it's okay. He's ready for that. While the the the, the rebellious one and the sin, sinner, he basically thinks that he's going to live a long life and he says, let me uh, indulge in sin now while I'm still young and later on I'll repent. So when the when sudden death comes to him, then his hopes fade and he's not able to repent. Similarly to the disbeliever, when death comes to him all of a sudden, he no longer is, is able to repent to Allah and accept the true religion. So it is a sorrow uh, and a sorrowful punishment for him. Next, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَىٰ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبُوا فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ أَفَأَمِنَ أَهْلُ الْقُرَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا بَيَاتًا وَهُمْ نَائِمُونَ أَوَأَمِنَ أَهْلُ الْقُرَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا ضُحًا وَهُمْ يَلْعَبُونَ أَفَأَمِنُوا مَكْرَ اللَّهِ فَلَا يَأْمَنُوا مَكْرَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ and if the people of the towns had believed and had taqwa in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then certainly we should have opened for them blessings from the heaven and the earth. But these people of the towns, they belied the messengers. So we took them with punishment for what they used to earn. Did the people of the towns then feel secure against the coming of our punishment by night while they were asleep? Or did the people of the towns then feel secure against the coming of our punishment in the forenoon while they were playing? Did they then feel secure against Allah's plan? None feel secure from Allah's plan except the people who are the losers. Blessings come with faith, while kufr comes with torment, while kufr brings torment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions here the little faith of the people of the towns to whom he subhanahu wa ta'ala sent messengers. In another instance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the similar uh, point, فَلَوْلَا كَانَتْ قَرِيَةٌ فَلَوْلَا كَانَتْ قَرِيَةٌ آمَنَتْ فَنَفَعَهَا إِلَيْهَا إِلَّا قَوْمَ يُوسَ لَمَّا آمَنُوا كَشَفْنَا عَنْهُمْ عَذَابَ الْخِزْيِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَمَتَّعْنَاهُمْ إِلَىٰ حِيَانٍ Was there any town, any community that believed after seeing the punishment and its faith at that moment saved it from the punishment except the people of Yunus? They were the only ones that were saved from the punishment when they believed, we removed from them the torment of this grace in the life of the present world and permitted them to enjoy for a while. This ayah indicates that no city believed in its entirety except the city of Prophet Yunus because they all believed after they were stricken by punishment. So Allah struck them with punishment. They understood the message. They repented to Allah and asked for forgiveness. Allah accepted their repentance. Allah said to the Prophet Yunus alayhi salam, وَأَرْسَلْنَاهُ إِلَىٰ مِئَةِ أَلْفٍ أَوْ يَزِيدُونَ فَآمَنُوا فَمَتَّعْنَهُمْ إِلَىٰ حِينَ And we sent him to a hundred thousand people or even more in that town. And they all believed in Yunus alayhi salam. So we gave them enjoyment for a while. Allah said in another ayah, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا فِي قَرْيَةٍ مِنْ نَذِيرٍ And we did not send a warner to a township. Allah said here, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَىٰ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا and if the people of the towns had believed and had taqwa, meaning their hearts had faith in what the messenger brought, brought them, believed and obeyed him, and had taqwa by performing the acts of obedience and abstaining from prohibitions, what would the result be? Allah said, we should have opened for them blessings from the heaven and the earth. So having taqwa gives you reward in this world and in the hereafter. And 
uh, blessing from the heaven here refers to the rain that falls from the sky and the vegetation of the earth because water is the source of life. Allah said, وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبُوا So because they did not have taqwa and they belied the messengers, instead of Allah giving them good things, Allah took them with punishment because of what they used to earn. Now they denied the messengers so that Allah punished them and sent destruction on them as a result of the sins and wickedness that they earned. Allah then said, while warning and threatening against defying his orders and daring to commit his prohibitions. In other words, you know, those towns, they did not do what Allah told them, Allah destroyed them. Now the speech is direct to the existing towns. Do the people of the existing towns then feel secure? The disbelievers among them, do they feel secure that there should come to them Allah's punishment during the night while they are asleep? Or did the people of the towns then feel secure against the coming of the punishment of Allah in the forenoon while they were playing? So Allah is warning the, the disbelieving towns that Allah can brings them punishment either by day or by night while they are busy in their affairs and unaware. Did they feel secure against Allah's plan to destroy disbelievers, against his torment, against his vengeance, and against his power to destroy them while they are inattentive and heedless? Because none feel secure from Allah's plan except the people who are the losers. Al-Hasan al-Basri said, describing two types of people, the first type is a believer who performs the act of worship that Allah ordered him to do, all the while feeling fear in his heart. He's feeling fright, he's feeling anxiety that Allah might not accept his deeds, that his deeds are not according or up to par with what they're supposed to be because he fears Allah. While the fajr, the wicked sinner or disbeliever, he commits acts of disobedience while he's feeling safe. He just says, Allah is uh, forgiven. Allah will forgive me. Well, Allah says, did you take a covenant that Allah will forgive you as a person? Allah is, is all forgiven. He forgives whomever he wants. But you don't know, son of Adam, if Allah will forgive you as a person. And when we talk about forgiveness here, we don't talk about disbelief or polytheism. These things Allah does not forgive. We're talking about a believer who commits sins. Next, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَوَلَمْ يَهْدِنِ الَّذِينَ يَرِثُونَ الْأَرْضَ مِنْ بَعْدِ أَهْلِهَا أَنْ لَوْ نَشَاءُ أَصَبْنَاهُمْ بِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَنَطْبَعُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ فَهُمْ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ Is it not a guidance for those who inherit the earth from its previous inhabitants that had we willed, we would have punished them for their sins as well? And we seal up their hearts so that they hear not. Ibn Abbas commented on Allah's statement, أَوَلَمْ يَهْدِ الَّذِينَ يَرِثُونَ الْأَرْضَ مِنْ بَعْدِ أَهْلِهَا it is, not, is it not a guidance for those who inherit the earth from its previous inhabitants? Ibn Abbas commented saying, Allah says, did we not make clear to them that had we willed, we would have punished them because of their sins? That means the same way the previous nations were punished. Mujahid and several others said similarly. Abu Ja'far bin Jalil al-Tabari explained this ayah saying, Allah says, did we not make clear to those who succeeded on the earth after destroying the previous nations who used to dwell in that land, then they followed their own ways and behaved as Did we not make clear to them I'm that I'm sorry? Your phone, your phone is not proper. You can hear you properly. I cannot hear properly. No, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. So. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking, did the people of town 
feel uh, safe that we would bring them punishment for their sins by bringing them the bringing them the same end that was decreed for those before them, and then we seal up their hearts, we place a cover over their hearts, and the result as a result they will not hear the words of advice or remind. And Allah stamps on their hearts because of their disbelief, so they don't hear the words of uh, advice and they cannot comprehend the truth. فَهُمْ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ So that they hear not the words of advice or reminding. I said similarly, Allah said, أَفَلَمْ يَهْدِ لَهُمْ كَمْ أَهْلَكْنَا قَبْلَهُمْ مِنَ الْقُرُونِ يَمْشُونَ فِي مَسَاكِنِهِمْ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِأُولِنُّهَا Is it not a guidance for them how many generations we have destroyed before them in whose dwellings they walk? Verily, and this are signs indeed for men of understanding. أَوَلَمْ يَهْدِ لَهُمْ كَمْ أَهْلَكْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ مِنَ الْقُرُونِ يَمْشُونَ فِي مَسَاكِنِهِمْ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتِنَا فَلَا يَسْمَعُونَ Is it not a guidance for them how many generations we have destroyed before them in whose dwellings they do walk about? Verily, therein indeed are signs. Would they not listen? In other words, the, the towns that are inhabited by the people used to belong to other people that disobeyed Allah and Allah destroyed them. So that in itself is a sign that they are walking in the dwellings of people and generation that existed before them and were destroyed because of their wickedness and their disbelief. Similarly, Allah says in Surah Ibrahim, أَوَلَمْ تَكُونُوا أَقَسَمْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلُ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ زَوَالٍ وَسَكَنْتُمْ فِي مَسَاكِنِ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ had you not sworn aforetime that you would not leave the world for the hereafter and you dwelt in the dwellings of men who wronged themselves and Allah destroyed them as a result? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said, وَكَمْ أَهْلَكْنَا قَبْلَهُمْ مِنْ قَرْنٍ هَلْ تُحِسُّ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ أَوْ تَسْمَعُ لَهُمْ لِكْزَا And how many generations before them have we destroyed? Can you find a single one of them or can you even hear a whisper from them? Meaning, do you see any of them or hear their voices? These mighty people that existed before and belied their messengers and threatened to kill them, Allah destroyed them and they no longer existed. People don't even know their names. So after walking in this land and being so powerful and threatening to harm the followers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah took them away and they no longer exist and no one even hears a whisper from them after they were filling the earth with yelling and threats and other types of tyranny. There are also many other ayah that testify that Allah has torment and punishment strikes his enemies when Allah has knelt and wishes his faithful believers. Thereafter comes Allah's statement, and he is the most truthful ruler of the world that exists. Allah says, there's something wrong with the Shah Ahmed. No? There's something wrong with the, the, the voice. I oh. can can't hear you very well. Okay, I think maybe the position of the name is not really great. It's okay, we're almost finished, this lesson, so just bear with me, those were the towns whose story we laid out to you, and there came indeed to them their messengers with clear proofs, but they were not such who would believe in what they rejected before. Thus Allah does seal up the hearts of the disbelievers, and most of them we found not true to their covenant, but most of them we found indeed rebellious. So after narrating the stories of the people of the Prophet Nuh who Saleh, Lut, and Shu'aib destroyed the disbelievers, saving the believers born in these nations by explaining the truth to them and 
by explaining the truth to them with the evidence sent in the words of his messengers. Allah's peace and blessing be on them all. Allah said, Tilka al min Those were the towns that we relate to you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, their story and news, because you, the, you were not there. You were not present with them. So this is telling you the stories of the people of old. And as we had said before, the Quran has three main topics. It's speaking about monotheism of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the news of the people of old, and then the halal and halal rulings. So here, one of the uh, major sections of the Qur'an is the stories of the people of old because Allah gives an example to the uh, believers and the people that exist after those destroyed people so that they may take heed and not commit the same mistakes. And there came indeed to them their messengers with clear proofs and evidences of the truth of what they brought them. Allah said in another verse, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا And we never punish until we have sent a messenger to give warning. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الْقُرْآنَ قُصُّهُمْ عَلَيْكَ مِنْهَا قَرَائِمُ وَحَصِيدَ وَمَا ظَلَمْنَاهُ وَلَكِنْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ That is some of the news of the tales which we lay unto you of them. Simply standing and seeing and then wept. We will the night with the world themselves. So he says, For my king, you will make a very good but they were not such who would believe in what they had rejected before, meaning they would not have later on believed in what the messengers brought them because they denied the truth when it first came to them, although they recognized them. So this is them. So it's not like they didn't know the truth. They recognize the truth, but they rejected it. And this is according to the Tafsir of Ibn Atiyah. This explanation is sound and is supported by our statement. And what will make you perceive that if it came, these verses that they're asking for, they will not believe. And we shall turn their hearts and their eyes away from guidance as they refused to believe they're in for the first time. So they refused to believe, so Allah stamped on their hearts and turned them away from guidance because they recognized the truth and yet they denied it. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said here, وَذَلِكَ يَطْمَعُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِ الْكَافِرِينَ وَمَا وَجَدَنَا لِأَكْثَرِهِمْ مِنْ عَهْدُ وَإِنْ وَجَدَنَا أَكْثَرَهُمْ لَفَاسِقِينَ Thus Allah does seal up the heart of the disbelievers because they knew the truth and disbelieved in it. And most of them, most of these disbelievers, most of the people of the towns, we found that they were not, they were not true to their covenant. And that means most of the previous nations were not true to their covenant of accepting the truth once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends messengers to them. But most of them we found to indeed be rebellious. They knew the truth and yet they chose to disbelieve. This ayah means we found most of them to be rebellious, deviating away from obedience and compliance. The covenant mentioned here is the fitrah that Allah instilled in them while still in their father's loins and taking their covenant. This is the covenant that is mentioned in Surah Al-A'raf. When Allah says that he took the covenant from the children of Adam uh, that, and he made them witness that he is their Lord. This is when Allah first created Adam. Allah uh, rubbed the back of Adam alayhi with his right hand and uh, the uh, progeny of Adam alayhi salam that would go to Jannah uh, came out of his loins and Allah rubbed on the back of Adam alayhi salam with his left hand and the people of hellfire came from Allah's loins and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them witness that he is their Lord and this is a quality that every single human being is born with. That's why the Prophet said every human being is born on the fitrah and it's only his parents that turn him into a Jew, a Christian or a pagan through the practices that they teach these kids. And similarly, many Muslims turn their kids into deviants or into disbelievers through the practices that they teach them, through the schools they send them to, through the countries they make them live in. So it is in the fit, in the natural predisposition that Allah creates everyone with to recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one and only lead that is worthy of worship. 
So this is the covenant. It is the first covenant that Allah took from them from us all when we were still uh, parents in the laws of Adam alayhi salam. Now we they affirm this covenant. The son of the children of Adam affirmed this covenant and testified against themselves to this fact. However, they defied this covenant because when messengers came to them, they recognized the truth, they recognized that this is what they had in their hearts, but yet they chose to throw it behind their backs and they worshiped others besides Allah because of some worldly benefits, having no proof or plea, nor support from rationality or by the divine law that they are allowed to commit polytheism. Surely the pure fitra, natural predisposition, defies these actions by all the while. All the honorable messengers from beginning to end forbade their people from committing polytheism. Muslim, says, that I created my servants, monotheists. This is the, the creation. This is the pure creation that says, that we need more feasts. But the devils came to them and deviated them from their religion and prohibited them. محمد محمد is not good yeah Every child is born upon the fitra. It is only his parents who turn him into a Jew, a Christian, or Zoroastrian. So we will stop here, inshallah, and then uh, we will start tomorrow, inshallah, from the story of Musa, alayhi salam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us the beneficial knowledge. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the truth and make us steadfast the willing to remain here. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the day that we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the best day of our existence. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not make us among the people that reject the truth and don't recognize it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure the sin among us and to have mercy on our dead among us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our families, our provision. Mm-hmm. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from our trials and tribulations. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from harm. And then finally, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gather us by his and